Welcome back, world traveler. <laughs> oh, yes. Here I am in Latin America. It's so exciting. <laughs> so what do, what do people say there about, you know, the world situation? Are, are you hearing anything? Do you mean about Malay, their Trump, their maniac? <laughs> oh, is that? Okay, I, I wasn't even focused on that. So they have another in Argentina or in a... In a uh, yeah. In a, no, this is in Argentina. Okay, and he makes Trump look reserved, talented, bright. <laughs> he is a nightmare. Really? Wow. So not only does he want to dismantle the healthcare system and dismantle public education, it'll be all right to sell your organs, Andre. Wow. All of them? <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine? I need a new car. I'll just sell a kidney. My Lord. Yeah, well, Argentina, the only thing I know is that they're having really high inflation, so they're probably really hurting in their bottom line. So then that's in part what you might hear, these extreme extreme suggestions. But of course. I mean, when you start yeah. to talk about selling organs, you're really, really going down. You're really road. out there. You're yeah. really out there. Huh. Yeah, you should check him out, Millet. So it, it, what's he on as far as his, his timeline? It, was he elected and he has a certain term? Um, they have a two-tiered system. They've just had their primaries, and he got 30% of the primaries, which is a good result if you like it like that. Everyone is hoping that it's a protest vote to the main parties before the big election. Yeah, I know this is the thing that we're seeing in so many democracies that one, one third of the country can, can in a sense, hold the other two thirds hostage. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's yes. so sad. Yeah. Yes. So now that the right is talking to him and, ooh, but you only have to take one look and you're dealing with a complete psychopath. And, he, and you're saying like, like Trump with a history of all this or is this a more recent? No, he's come from nowhere like Trump. Mm. But he's worse. I can't describe the language, you know, on the video well, that he uses. And the Pope is a communist and he just goes for the lot. Wow. Well, I guess it should make me feel better. I guess I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't help anybody. No, you know? I know. It's uh, yeah, turbulent times. Yeah. So, so what have you been intuiting? I mean, I know you've been traveling and so forth, but I'm sure your psychic antenna is constantly tuning in. What's and my sociology you... antenna, ah. because I've just been in Greece as well. Ah. And there was a huge general strike there because now um, they've held on to the eight-hour working day, even though people work longer hours. Symbolically, it's still in place. And now they're saying, the government is saying, you can work 16 hours a day. We don't care anymore. So people are just, uh... so this is a global phenomenon, which is what we were saying. But I feel, back to my intuitive feel, we're getting to this pointy bit where it's stand up or it's all over. It's pushing people, I think, to have to take a stand mm -hmm. who are perhaps reluctant they're not active political creatures you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah that that makes a lot of sense because that that's that's happening in the u.s with all the yeah. different strikes and and this is where you know in contrast to the people that have this idea it's all going toward fascism the pluto and aquarius cycle is the total opposite it goes toward uh, more power to the people which is why you're seeing people stand up and this is not uh you know people in nazi germany the communication now is very different things get around with lightning speed it's it's so much more difficult to create a narrative and and force people to believe it because they know too much so my feeling is that it's going that way at least in some measure you know over the next few yes. years yes and i'm i'm really quite confident i'm an optimist by nature <laughs> that we're overdue for a pendulum swing Yes. Right. It's, it's just gone out and out and out and out. Mm -hmm. and has to come back. It's true. Know? That's true. That's true. And by the way, that would be if you're looking at big cycles, the uh, Jupiter Saturn conjunctions, there was one in, in 1980, one in 2000 and one in 2020. And, ah. 
and the Saturn Pluto cycle as well is pointing in that direction. So yes, that makes a lot of sense. That you know, they, because this started back in the Reagan years as trickle down, and you yes, know, and and uh, now it's it's looking like you know the, the the markers are pointing the other way. The only problem is that of course people get impatient. They they want it to be tomorrow, and that can take a while. You know. Yes, exactly. But I think things are sort of achingly slow for a period of time and then there's a breakthrough. Right. So I think if people can be patient, there will be a breakthrough. It was like the Berlin Wall mm -hmm. was up until one night it was gone <laughs> or down. You know, it's yeah. like that. It takes this agonising length of time and then boom, 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 boom. Yes. And yes. I'm, I'm hoping the new generation, I can't even remember what they're called now. Are they Gen Z or something? I think <laughs> Who so, are yeah. The, it, yeah. The, the ones the after the millennials? Yes. The ones after that. Yeah, I think they're called. Yes. Yeah. yes. I think they are coming through with a different energy and purpose. Like, I would say so, yeah, I would say so. That makes a lot of sense. And, and and they're the generation that a lot of these old school politicians are desperate to stop from voting because they know that they do not approve of their of their their uh, their ways. That's right. I think millennials were the tail end of the neoliberal experiment, privatize everything, you know, small government, all that stuff, even though America, Australia, Canada, UK got wealthy with big government, strong unions, but we won't let facts stand in the way. So the millennials, yeah. I think, came at the tail end of that. And the ones I know and my own kids and stuff, um, they work so hard. They don't look up, you know, just juggle, juggle. I think the next ones under them mm. are going to go, what? They're not going to believe these tired old narratives. They just yeah. Won't. yeah, you know, and when you look at the U.S. situation, it's so clear here that the echoes of the Civil War and the GOP attitude that, in a sense, they want to enslave people. There's a there's a slavery quality. We want to tell you what to do, keep you down. It's amazing that all those people follow someone like Trump because they're actually part of that, you know, oppression. They would be getting a lot of it, but they're mesmerized, you know, by the by the foolishness yes. of it. Yeah. And fear and hate are strong drivers mm -hmm. and they, they make people irrational. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. You know, they're, they're really damaging emotions, Indeed. you know, and the GOP has notoriously been really effective at driving that. It's totally true. It is totally true. But then you know, if a person doesn't sense that, then they're not going to practice it. You know, they just look to the to the figure in front of them, mm. you follow that. What's your sense of that, by the way? Because that's one of the big quandaries, you know, the way the momentum is going. And uh, on the one hand, Trump is getting hit with things practically every day and it keeps accelerating. And then there's the fact that he still has this big lead. Do you get the sense that he even gets to the nomination or do you get a, a different sense that something else okay, happens? Okay, my sense for a while has been he'll get the nomination. But I don't think he'll be there at the starting line of 2024 actual leading into the election. I think it'll, it'll dribble on. I'm not sure what his chart says. He'll, but for me, he'll get the clear nomination. He'll solidify their nightmare. I, I see a changing of the guard. Instead of it being a Dem nightmare, it's a GOP nightmare now. Mm. Just look at what happened yesterday with this ridiculous House committee into... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> it's gold. It's gold. All it is is a forum for really smart Dems to have the floor and wipe the floor with these people. Yeah. It was actually really exciting. I'd been avoiding it going, oh, of course they're doing this. But truly, it's worth watching, you know. Yeah, no, totally. And, and you know, you're seeing now that when you look back at what they did to Hillary Clinton, which was to depress her numbers, and she being a conventional politician, 
didn't push back the way she should have. She should have been taking them on and saying, you know, you have nothing. This is complete garbage, which is what the Democrats are doing now, you know, to to dampen the the effect. And, you know, they, they don't have this is the other thing the, the GOP. I mean, this crew, they're just so incompetent. You know, they they, they launch a, uh, an impeachment and they don't know the timeline. One of them is standing <laughs> up there and he's being asked, like, do you realize that Joe Biden was not in politics in 2017. So how can he, that he be influencing anything? And he says, well, this just means you don't believe me. No, I'm not. I, I'll try to believe you, but tell me how this works. I mean, if you're doing it, at least have a sense of your coherent plan in some way. But none of them, none of them do. No, this is the thing. They have no concept of governance. They have no concept of legal responsibility they're trying to indict the president of the united states and they don't know where they put their lunch it's pathetic yeah yeah and well, it's a mercy yeah. it's pathetic because i think america survived the trump years only because he put incompetence everywhere that's true that's true and that that actually is it's it's comforting because you see them operating and you you just can't believe that these people are where they are and the fact that they're not competent means they're very unlikely to put things together. You know, and then they're also, I mean, that guy that got caught doing the thing where he puts up the the text and he, he, he photoshopped part of the text and then Ocasio-Cortez called him out and said, hey, you know, you can't do this. You have to show the whole thing. And he's smiling. And so I'm thinking, you people, honestly, I mean, we got to get rid of all of yeah. this. Yeah, they are cartoons. They're cartoon characters, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. it's just amazing. And Jamie Raskin's always good, but there's a wonderful young black woman from Texas. Yes. I'll put the link up on my comments. And she really crunched them up and spat out the bones. That's totally she true. Yeah, right. yeah. And the other guy, that other, um, this was a man, but he was doing the counterpunching and he was being really direct and, and you know, pretty yeah. insulting. I can't remember his because name. Because this is what the Dems need to do. And let me share my aggravation with the Dems yet again, which is, but I think the, the dam's beginning to break now. They have a really talented second tier with the new people, Eric Swalwell and um, the AOCs and all these people that they sort of keep on a tight leash. They should let them out. Biden can still be very conciliatory and all of that publicly. Let that second tier loose. Because people want to hear pushback. Yes, yes. Even if they instinctively know Trump was an ignoramus and a bully, they want to hear someone else say it. You shouldn't just have to say it in your kitchen in Baltimore. You, that's what the Democrats are for. And they need to punch hard, punch often, and finish the job. You're totally 100% right. That's what I've been saying myself. I 100% agree. If you send all these, you know, good communicators and just keep punching, keep saying, yeah. I mean, are you saying that, you know, the presidents, anybody can take, you know, nuclear secrets home and keep it at home? Is that what you're saying? Because I, I don't quite get it. And you're saying that these are false charges. How? How does this work? Just keep yeah. repeating it so that yeah. really you're just trying to clip away. If you clip away a few percentage points, then they have no, they have no chance, but you can't stand That's in right. the background constantly. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that second tier of being a bit younger, or in fact a lot younger, um, they think and speak in sound bites. People don't want to hear about what might happen with Addendum 43 on page 67 of some worthy document. Forget it. It's true. It's true. Just put it out there in sound bites. It's true. I mean, the, the thing they should do is, at minimum, put them on a special line this guy rick wilson i don't know if you've heard him he's an ex yeah. uh, and he's you know he's very astute he knows how to do politics he knows what yeah. works but you know democrats tend to they, they play nice they play too nice and so then yeah. uh, it's, it's and these are difference. not normal times they're not it's absolutely that <laughs> they're totally abnormal yes yes or, or as marty feldman said abby normal <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's totally true. So, so this thing also with Trump, though, your sense is that he, I've heard this a, a couple of times, so he wins, but then somehow he's not able to, to. Yes, to whether it's the weight of the judicial stuff coming through or whether he 
genuinely flips out completely or something, I don't see him actually contesting. So that's why it's really important and scary in some way who he chooses as a vice president, as a running mate, because they could well be the one. And if that's a strong person, that could be a problem. Um, but if it's a delicious, fortunately, again, he won't want someone who's more articulate than he is. That's why he was happy with Mike Pence until he wanted the man dead. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so who he chooses, I'm just thinking about this now as I'm talking, ugh, is massively important. So please let that be a really ghastly person. You know? Well, usually, though, uh, they most of them are the the people that you can think of that he might pick. I mean, what are the odds that he would pick? Who's he going to pick? That is well, Nikki Haley could be a threat, um, but I don't think he's going to put a smart, sassy woman in there. What about Carrie Lake? Although she would be she would be another magnet for Democratic votes against. Him. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think she, yeah she's a bit out there. Well, very out there. So mm, I think we have to look at this in coming weeks because I think the running mate could be more important than the Yeti himself. Yes, here's the thing that if you go with the astrology, there's almost a sense that in addition to all the other things that are happening, he would probably make the wrong choice of partner because in the partnership area, it's really compromised. So it, it, it's like a moth to a flame. Oh, you go good. straight to the thing you shouldn't be doing. And, oh, great. So, so that, and, and the other risk, which I keep mentioning, is health because he has some yeah. pretty daunting health aspects. And, you know, it's like you said earlier, you said, you know, the Berlin Wall, it comes down after many years and it seems sudden. There was a build up, though, you could see the, oh, the markers. Yeah. And the same with Trump. He's, he's under tremendous pressure. Uh, he may pretend that he isn't, you know, but now between the loss of his business, they were saying today that there's a possibility that he'll, the Trump name will be wiped. Of, you know, there will be no more New York Trump name anywhere or his properties or any of it. There's a strong It's possibility. ironic, isn't it? Because it's the Seinfeld organization. <laughs> it, it's only full of itself. You know, there's nothing yeah. there literally behind the facade, yeah. you know. So the loss of the name, the trading name, Trump, but isn't that only in New York? Well, New York and I mean, where where else though? I mean, this is the thing. When you well, start yeah. a downtrend like this, it, it's it's all like how you said earlier. You see these patterns, and you know you do see the lead up as well. Some things are completely out of the blue, but typically you see the background yes. coming. It's like the thing with Putin. He is doing really poorly, and when you see the astrology in twenty twenty five, it's not good at all. It's very difficult. So why would mm. you expect that then things start to go better? No, they don't go better. They go worse. Yes. That's the logic. So now it's uh, New York, maybe Florida is next. How do you know that uh, they're going to have a, a GOP governor forever? I mean, Florida in the end is is the, the last time when he won, the first time it was very, very tight. So it's still considered a purple state. It's more red now, but who knows? You know, so there may be no... Well, also, people can't insure their homes. So the fantasy retirement in Miami or somewhere else in Florida is literally under threat. True. You know? That's true. So I think it's this sort of people tend to be selfish because they're taught. Uh, I digress. <laughs> I argue <laughs> people are taught to be selfish. Most people say, oh, human beings are selfish innately. No. People are taught to be selfish or taught to think as part of a collective. And I say this with some authority because I spent 35 years and still in the Pacific Islander community in Australia, New Zealand, the Islanders, right, and the islands. And they are, from birth, cultivated to think as part of the collective. Mm -hmm. So if you give a bag of chippies to a five-year-old Polynesian kid, the first thing they do is they look in the room, they count the number of children and divide the chips. No one asks them, no one tells them to share. 
they all by five they already know that. Yeah. And the yeah. worst thing that a Polynesian can say about another Polynesian is, and I've heard this conversation over the years, oh, he's selfish. And other people go, oh, no, I didn't <laughs> know that. He's selfish. Yeah. It's like being a serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which is. So it's a culturally induced paradigm of being an individual struggling alone or as part of the collective. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And we then, need yeah. to think as global citizens right now. It's true, and this is the thing that it's also what people are being fed, you know, constantly. So, so if uh, something isn't being thrown at the collective in a in a country, to for example, say we disapprove of of lying and deceiving and gaslighting, then people would value truth more. But it's gotten lately that it's considered almost a virtue to lie and deceive, and that this is somehow you know the way to go, and it's not because it's very damaging. You know, the yes. breaks down. And Biden, I was pleased in the last day or so, has said, a, a take on the old quote, um, democracy doesn't have to end with a rifle. It can end because people fail to speak up and stand up. Mm -hmm. Protect it. The words to that effect, I was very pleased it's to true. hear that. It's true. And it's he true. has to keep doing this. That's his role as I see it, right, caretaker of the nation in this time of strife. So it's ultra important who, how Kamala Harris performs too. Have you looked at her chart? Well, that's one of the markers that uh, encourages me because with astrology, you are looking at all the charts, I mean, including your own. You look at everything to get a feel for where's this thing going? Kamala's chart is really good next year and around the election. It's, well, I'll, I'll illustrate it. Jupiter's crossing through her ascendant. That's when Bill Clinton was elected in 92 and Obama was elected in 2008. Those are very special periods. So, oh, that that's pretty good. I mean, it, it almost feels like she wins the election, you know, more than Bi Biden's is Funny Biden's you should say that. Funny you should say that. That's where I'd put my money. Huh. Well, there you go. So that, that makes a lot of sense because uh, Biden's chart is much, much better than Trump's. Much better. It's not a perfect That's situation and it's not, not as that. symbolically, uh, uh, you know, tight as it was in 2020, but it's it's perfectly good to win an election. It's just that his running mate is really good. You know, it looks... I'm thrilled with... The, and I'm not innately a Kamala fan, but... Apparently, she's getting really good receptions when she speaks anywhere. And um, I think they need to start beefing her up, letting her off the leash more to particularly next year. doesn't matter now so much because people have very short attention span. But going into next year, people have to know her and recognise her and trust her and know that if they're voting for an 80-year-old, they are also have a good chance of getting her as well. Because that's you've got to look at the elephant in the room with Biden's age and if they feel confident. Yeah, well, and, and I mean, that's the thing that the, Gem the Jupiter-Gemini cycle starts in late May, which is just when things are getting intense. So as we go into... June, July, August. She is really up there. So wow. it fits like fits like a glove. Um, uh, that that's one of the markers that encourages me. You know, not to mention that at the same time, the orange menace is up to his eyeballs. He's got Saturn <laughs> squaring him. The, the last thing you need, the last, is being in court with credible charges and Saturn squaring you. That's a recipe for disaster. You know, plain and simple. So, I mean, I, I see this in crim crime shows where I'll notice the criminals are always the police, Saturn Square, they knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And I think the Teflon Don and all of that has been evident for decades. He's just ridden a wave of madness, you know. Um, but you can't go on forever. No, no. And, I, and sometimes people ask, you know, when you hear the story with this, 
his financial malfeasance. And you ask yourself, well, why, why were these banks going along with the con? Because he would show up and say, look, I have a 30,000 foot apartment and the apartment is a third of that. I think yeah. the reason is there was a lot of money flow. This is where Trump, Trump's genius is, is that he keeps the money moving. And so they were looking at it as well, whatever, because we'll get, we'll make money. He does well, pay it back eventually. Well, five million in next week for something. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he owns 50, owes 50 million. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but then it's like anything eventually you run into a brick wall because there are too many points, you know, that you've, you know, too many things you've left, too much evidence of, of, of uh, criminality. I mean, uh, Leticia James came out the judge said, there's no need for a trial. Yes. You know, you're, you're guilty. That's it. Right. And now, of course, he'll appeal and he'll delay. Right. Yes. But one of the things that I notice in this chart as well is that uh, in po in the post election period, it's even worse than in the uh, prior period, because where the planets go then enter this region that I've seen again and again in the last number of years, planets go through there. He struggles through something that he does or something that happens to him. So none of it is good. None. You know. uh, music to my ears, Andre. And music to mine too. I know, and yet you know, there's always this thing that we're looking at all this, and and uh, even though there are strong, you know, pointers, it's still the sense of uncertainty because you don't quite know. I mean, what could happen? What if there's a hurricane? What if there's you know something that could change the, yes, the outcome? Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I I hope there's a sort of zeitgeist going on for decent thinking, caring Americans next year as 2024 hits, that people will realise the implication, not all the maggers, but at least dial them back to 25%, which is where they sort of started. They built to about 30. So they're hovering between those figures. Yeah. But I'm also hoping that some of them have to be disillusioned, even if they can't admit that to their boss, their cousin, their partners who are MAGA, who may not vote at all in the American tradition. They may not vote. It's true. It's true. The only, the only thing, the big caveat is that the superseding cycle or the you know, at the meta level, the, there are a lot of echoes to the civil war, both in the behavior and in the planets. And so... I caution people around this. Uh, I think this is going to the Democrats, but the MAGA wing is not going to be happy and the country is going to be in, still in a lot of stress post-election. I don't think they're going to accept it. I don't think they're ready yet to drop all that because if you think of, first of all, Republican Party, it's just filled with cowards. No one there is willing to take on the, you know, the, what Liz Cheney did, take on the job. They're worried about their safety, et cetera. So they know that if they speak out and tell the truth, even minimally, they might be, you know, harassed by, by these MAGA people. So my feeling is... They will looking... be. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. They will be. Exactly. So I think we're looking at at least two, uh, this uh, election and probably the midterms and maybe even till 2028 uh, is possible that there will be a lot of this leftover, but as long as, as long as we don't have, you know, a, a crazy person in power, you got to take what you can get. That's basically exactly, the problem, you know? exactly. Yeah. And a follow-up them win means the grown-ups in the room can do more than they can at the moment, if they capture both the chambers and stuff. So sometimes you've got to just ride above it and just bulldoze through, and do the right thing you know, and let people catch up. Yeah. Like yeah. we in Australia, we had an extraordinary prime minister. In the 1970s, Australia was a conservative backwater. Oh, that's probably a bit harsh, but the, the scene. Socially very, very conservative. And our national narrative is we're anti-authoritarian, and we are on the ground, but there's this other side. Anyway, we got Gough Whitlam, he came, and he was the opposite of Trump. He was very patrician, um, but Labor, meaning Dem, and he picked, hand-picked 10, 15, 20 of the brightest minds in Australia and put them in the newly formed Office for Women, the newly formed everything for the arts, new form. 
And I can remember the hysteria at the time of people saying this will be the end of Australia as we know it. He was actually formally dismissed by the Governor General. This had never happened before. They were so freaked out. But you know what? In those two years, he changed everything and it made us a better country. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, in a certain way, this is also the terrible unfairness toward Biden. He's done more in his presidency than anyone, oh. probably even than, than Roosevelt. And by the way, Sleepy Joe, he doesn't know what's going on. Cognitive decline. Every time something is decided, he seems to get the better of his smarter and more present. Yes, more yes, yes. Cognitively yes. able uh, Republican, whoever, like McCarthy, you name it. So, or what he did in Europe, when he brought NATO back together, he's obviously totally awake. It's just that, unfortunately, he's aged a little more than uh, he, he might have been for a politician. Fact is that he doesn't look as sharp, but that doesn't mean he isn't sharp or he doesn't know what. No, that's doing. right. And he may need an afternoon nap, but that's not the end of the world. You no, know. No, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so that's right. Can I ask you, Andre, um, indulge me, your channel, <laughs> um, the comparisons with the Civil War that we allude to generally and stuff, can you just give us, the viewers in this sense, a quick rundown on the similarities and or differences? So the Neptune-Uranus cycles, which are approximately half, uh, Uranus is about half the number of years, 84 years for Uranus to go around and Neptune is 160 years. So they're not quite in sync, but pretty close. So during the Civil War, they were essentially where they are today. And Neptune was opposite on the opposite side of the birth of the country. And so when the country is born, the country is united. When Neptune is opposite, the country is divided. Then in the Second World War, Neptune comes back to where it was uh, at the birth and the country comes together to fight the Nazis. Now it's opposite again. And the echoes are very similar. The Civil War, great discontent from the South. They wanted to keep their slavery business, which, you know, oppressed people. That's just the way it is. We're making money. Get out of our way. And now you can you can hear the racial undertones. It's obviously a totally different scenario. We're not in that kind of world, but it's very similar around this this, you know, white grievance, discontent, we want to control the country. We want to be the ones in charge. We want. We are the real Americans. We're the real Americans. Yeah. You should do our religion. You should do everything the way we say. Yeah. And, but like I always say to people, who won the last battle? Yes. It's going to happen. It's just that just like before, you know, you remember Reconstruction, something happened there where there was an election that was very close. They cut deals that led to Jim Crow and all the rest which stalled the, the you know, the, yeah. the progress. But nevertheless, the majority back then uh, won. And in fact, administrations back then, ironically, the GOP was the progressive party. Yes, yes, the these... ironies are deep and abiding. Aren't they? Exactly. And you see all these uh, progressive administrations, except for in the middle of the conflict. But my feeling is that we've we've been through the, the thick of it with Trump. And now it's just a, you know, a return, but not necessarily as quickly as you'd want. I mean, I have to admit, you probably would, would agree. Didn't you get a little bit fooled by when January 6th happened and then you heard the GOP yeah. speaking? Particularly thought, remember those first images, Sydney, yeah. um, oh, diff, the, the different ones, Lindsey Graham, da-da-da-da, that's it, I'm done. That looked like the moment. The moment, yeah. And then within 48 hours. They're terrified of their own voters. They are. They are. But think about it. That McConnell, can't be good. In the end, they don't have any smart people in this party, really, because McConnell, no. McConnell is really crafty. But if he had a, a sense of it, if you get rid of Trump there, you lobby your people, let's just get rid of this guy. Two yes. years later, they would have been a threat in the midterms because people forget yes. pretty quickly. Yeah, it's just exactly. come out of there. Exactly. Because you could have said, this is not good. I mean, whatever, whatever we may say, you're not allowed to... Uh, send people to the capital. Yeah. You can't stand in the in the Oval Office, and you can't be waiting around to 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 tweet to stop you know the the mayhem. So they could have said that, and they would be in a much better place now. But isn't this the pattern? 
there were so many moments. There was a lot of kaka running through everything, but there were key moments. One was the John McCain abuse. That should have been the end of the road right there when he was still a candidate. Then the Mexicans are all racists and drug dealers was another moment. <laughs> then there was Charlottesville. You know, you can certain so they've had umpteen opportunities yeah. Yeah. to go out <laughs> on a wave that people would have gone moo, 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 but would have understood. <laughs> and the fact that they didn't is not only bad for them, but that's what was so destructive to the country because True. it kept reinforcing the message he can't be that bad or someone would have done something. Very kept true. missing the opportunity. And now the Maddies are so, have the strong hold just for now, but it means even McConnell is a spent force now. He used to be able to whip them into shape behind closed doors. Now anyone who isn't with them is dismissed in an afternoon. They're gone. 50 years of experience, good, bad or ugly, gone. Very true. And they only yeah. keep their own. Yeah, and it's a, it's it's the you know, the disease of ultra short term thinking. You, you just think, well, we can't do that because they're mad if we do. That's what happened to Fox News. Fox News will give them what they want. That's kind of dangerous when you're lying because that's the other side of the <laughs> capitalist system. Someone is going to sue you, and they might yeah. get your money. And I think there's more money to come there, by the way, because the yeah, Fox I News, do too. The Fox Smart News Smartmatic hasn't even had their case yet. No, not yet. Did and they settle out of court. I can't remember. But there's more. I agree. There's going to be more to the Fox debacle. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's just it's the it's the disease of short term thinking, and and you don't realize that if you go through a little bit of a of a valley, then you reemerge again. And so now they've done a disservice to the whole country by keeping them around. But this happens in cycles, though, because if you study the 1930s, 1920s, uh, very similar that. People in Germany became totally mesmerized, right? But a lot of that, by the way, came because of the depression. These fascists need the chaos of really rough times. Absolutely. That's why Trump, Trump is always trying to light fires and start chaos so that he can capitalize on it. But the, yeah. it's not really all that fruitful right now. It's the wrong environment, you know, to be talking about fixing something that doesn't need to be fixed. It just doesn't. I mean, the minority can say that, but the majority of the people don't believe it. It's that simple. No. Yeah. And I hope, I'm, I'm sort of moving tack a bit, but I think we need to talk optimistically in the sense that if the Dems get a second crack at it all, 70-odd percent of Americans want some form of gun control. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know of that sort of consensus on any other issue. <laughs> By the way, that's in the, that was... Uh... Uh, an astrologer colleague, uh, Patrick Watson, he was on my channel a while back. He looked up the previous periods of gun legislation and they correlated with Saturn and Aries, which makes sense because Aries is firearms and Saturn is regulations. And that ah, and Saturn is going into Aries right after the, uh, like, uh, you know, in 2025. So yeah. to me, those are markers. What, you, you really expect the Republicans to pass gun legislation? No. So logically that would tend to align with uh, democrats passing uh, gun legislation i don't think they you know it's not going to be like australia where they'll you know take all your guns <laughs> which they should but but uh probably you know assault weapons and background checks i mean common sense things that you know in, in this country you're scrutinized more to get a driver's license or you know to than buying a gun which is insane because it's is, absolutely you know, insane uh, uh, one moment, I just have to send a message about the hot water situation. <laughs> that sounds good. Just a moment. I it might have dreaded this one. Mm -hmm. I'm nearly ready. Sorry about that, but this is critical, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hot water. What we take for granted. What we take for granted. You know. Sometimes I, I, uh, I'll try to correlate uh, 
you know, the arc of history, the cycles and the discovery of planets. And I'm convinced that Uranus is the, in a sense, you know, people are always looking for the, the age of Aquarius and it really liberated humanity, the discovery, because after that technology came in and for all the evils of, you know, th there are problems, of course, there are problems with everything. Of course, of course. But, you yeah. know, people turn on their light, they don't even think about it. Go back a few hundred years and you're lighting, you know, the kerosene lamp or whatever and hot water. Pff, and going to bed and... at six o'clock in winter, you know. Like, exactly, you know. exactly. And, and hot water, I mean, it's... it's it... Hot water. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. My mother would often lament, you know, because I was born on a, a farm and there was no hot water there for five years and then she got hot water and I can still see the look on her face, you know. <laughs> I know, it's like sugar. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I know, I know. Well. Uh, what, what's your sense of, uh, when you hear the thing about uh, AI and these, you know, potential... Uh, uh, debacles and you know being taken captive i i i think that uh one of the things one of the cycles the the neptune cycle speaking of that cycle because i mentioned it before the switch even though which it happens in 25 26 and then it stays there for 13 14 years in the next sign in part uh, that's an improvement even if not right away around the uh this whole uh, deception, gaslighting, disinformation uh, starting to ebb because the sign that has been in, it has been in since 2011 uh, is is uh, problematic for that. It has positive uh, patterns as well. A lot of information is now public on YouTube. You can research so many things that you couldn't before, and that's good. But the downside is the the uh, disinformation, anti-vax, and you know all, all those things that are made up and. Uh, you know, like people like Tucker Carlson saying, well, we don't really know. And what could it be? Or, you know, Russell Brandt, he's famous for that as well, asking questions. Oh. Yes. And I think, here's the thing. Do you remember back in the, I guess it was early 90s, the dot-com boom? Mm -hmm. And part of the power of all that, which was incomprehensible for those of us who came from a pre-internet world, into an internet world. Okay, that was the biggest leap of mankind, probably humankind. I correct myself. Mwah. Okay. <laughs> right? And we, the public, were told everywhere, look, it's going to be the end of blue-collar jobs. It's going to be end of the end. All your children can be brain surgeons now. They're going to be freed up because all of this wonderful stuff with the internet. Now, we've lived through that experience, and I think with AI, you can't put the genie back in the bottle and there'll be fabulous applications, particularly perhaps with people with paralysis and working limbs and, and things, and there'll be nightmarish scenarios. I think to a certain extent what is important is where we started this conversation because something comes in, it's how smart and compassionate is each society in terms of dealing with the issue is what matters rather than the topic or the introduction of this new technology. So, for example, if we go with the positive view that this new Gen Z are not going to tolerate this stuff and at the moment, I think the Federal Trading Commission is suing Amazon and stuff, and no doubt Amazon will have better paid lawyers and on it'll go. But I think we'll come to a tipping point. Or we need to come to a tipping point with that sort of stuff, crude exploitation of workers, mm -hmm. the absolute indulgence of big corporations has to end corporate welfare has to end i think education has to be upgraded because it's been you know stifled in the crib it has to be better funded same with a, i think it's a job lot i think if the culture improves and these young things come through and they're capable of critical thought imagine that yeah, Pretty imagine, that. imagine that, yeah. <laughs> now, any 
10 year old or 12 year old or 14 year old is capable of critical thinking if they are encouraged to do so and have the tools to do so and will then pride themselves in being able to see through this stuff. And so it'll only be your turkey that's left consuming this hatred and nastiness. So I th I think we can dissect each issue and become afraid or we can go, you know what, as humans, we need to upgrade. Very true. Yeah, very true. And this, this is definitely in the cycles, the 2020s are a, a turning in a new direction. And like any turn, you, you get some pain, you know, some adjustments and some fear yeah. and some uncertainty. Yeah. But it happened, it happened post World War Two, for example, that was a horrific period. And then you see, yeah. You know, yes, there was still the Soviet Union and all that, but you get the boomers, society went in a totally different direction. And this is yes. where we are now, again, you know, based on those cycles. So rather than thinking it's all going to blow up and end and be a disaster, why? I see a lot of markers that are, that are you know, uh, as, as you say, AI, it, it, of course, if you can use it well, it's fabulous. It's fabulous mm. because you can shorten... Uh, you can remove people's pain, you can do all kinds of things. So it's, it's absolutely true. But here's the thing. It will stay in the nightmare zone if you have the power of companies like Amazon that aren't even companies. I think we need a new word for them. You know, they have economies that are bigger than some countries. Who is Amazon? You know, we know CEOs and stuff, but they're entities that need another name. Where was I going with that point? Oh, the nightmare. So if we let, you know, Elon Musk run the world and ruin the world, if we let Amazon get away with absolutely everything, then imagine what's going to happen with AI. But if we start to stop those things, AI is part of that basket that, can, yeah. you know, there can be laws brought in and stuff, not in the framework we've got because it's already run amok. This has to be a brave new world, you know. Yes, no, and, and I think there in, in a lot of ways the legal system is the protector because you litigate it, you go through it, and that's what with Amazon, yes, they may have good lawyers, but it's not that they can't provide the great service they provide because the genius of having everything in one place. I have no problem with that. It's when you're starting to squeeze people out. It'll mean that you won't make as much money. It'll mean that, but so you're already making, I mean, you're, you're making trillions. You can't even economy. count the profit, you know. So if they had a tenth of what they're earning, it's still colossal. And there's no excuse for treating your workers like they treat their workers. It's true. I think yeah. I think people have to put their hand up for a bathroom break and you're not allowed to talk to the person beside you and all these petty humiliations that are built into this productivity model, you know, yeah. they're dehumanising. Exactly. I mean, or, or, or you'd have to say, you'd have to pay people like that double or triple. I mean, if you're going to say to a person, yeah. I want you to be a robot, Okay, well, how much are you going to pay me? I'll do it. Exactly. There's a price on anything, but you can't be paying, you know, a living wage. Uh, which is, uh, yeah. And then, I mean, what you're not even living. You're basically working all day and then dying of stress. So, yeah, it's crazy. Exactly. Or yeah. preventable health issues. So that's exactly where we are, I think, in all the alleged first world countries. Workers can conditions have just fallen through the floor and so insecure work is now the norm and insecure workers are docile workers in that sense because you know oh if I don't toe the line I'll lose this crappy job you know so people have to you know, really rethink this and I take heart too because people have this romantic retro idea of the 60s, the swinging 60s and the summer of love and la, 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 la. Well, I was in conservative Australia for this. There was no swinging anything going on in, in that sense. It was only everywhere when you look at it. It was only probably, I'm going to make up this figure, 
I'd say it was less than 2% of the population of the US that suddenly grew their hair and, you know, challenged the institutions and defied their parents and, um, you know, refused to be conscripted into an unjust war, etc. Mm. right? And that grew a bit over the decade, but it wasn't like it was a mass movement. Mm. I can remember parents refusing to let their sons in the house because their hair came down to here. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember and then that. we revisit it and go, oh, wasn't it? What? No, but it was a wave and people were carried by the wave, often kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you couldn't live with your boyfriend or girlfriend openly anywhere, you know, or any of that stuff. You know, there wasn't contraception. There were shotgun marriages. It was a nightmare. Very true. Many very true. Yeah. And when you ways, see that, it, it, like the numbers now seem to be, for example, the uh, when they do polls, that they, but that a pretty sizable majority is supporting the unions. And I think it's you know it's logical if you think about it. If you're in the majority of the population, you see well. Yeah, it makes sense to me that. The auto workers should get paid more since the auto companies are making a lot more money. They should share some of that. And why? Because they realize I'm in the same boat with my industry. It should be a matter of fairness. And so it is going in that direction. You know, it's, it's out there. And even I if really, some... really think so. And I think it's going to be, you know, painful for a little while yet. And then there'll be a breakthrough, then more breakthroughs. And then I think, hope, pray, there will be a new normal which is based on decency and not screwing people into the ground in this blatant way. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, that would be the the, most, the fairest karma for the, the Trump phenomenon. I, I've always thought you have to turn that into a swear word you know, literally that yeah. from the vocabulary, the way this yes. man has behaved, you know, basically encouraging people to be their worst selves. That's what he does. Yes, know? that's what he does for a living. Yeah, for a living. He does it himself. And he thinks that it's almost like you get the sense he thinks he's he's the king of the world because he's the best liar. Everybody lies. I just like lie better than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. You uh, know. I, uh, I know. Uh, I know. He's oh, just gosh. such a grub, you know. But he was symbolic. I think globally people might not want to hear it, but he had to be as gross and as selfish a being as he was and is to wake people up. It's like they were given the opportunity to wake up. And then who does he get on his side? The working class. True. You know, voting against themselves. Here's a man who never paid his subcontractors, you know, was notorious for being the worst boss in the world. So he's my man. Yeah, well, know. no, but that, see, this is the thing that if you, if you yourself feel disempowered, you look to a person who you think has power and he's saying to you, I, I'll, I'll tell you how you get yours. You do this, this and this. It's all all aggression and lying and twisting and so forth. Uh, but yeah, you're totally right. In the end, I mean, what did he give them? He said all kinds of things when he came into and office. Absolutely. Nothing. Did he bring back coal and steel? No. Did he build a wall? No. Did he do anything at all? No. no. And if they're still standing there going, he's my guy, I'm sorry. My sympathy is waning by the hour. <laughs> you know, I understand the phenomenon, and that was the genius of Paul Manafort. And he was the one who said, tell them they're the forgotten people. They'll eat it up. And Trump was going, what? What? <laughs> and just sort of spat it out and then got the reaction. And the rest is history, literally. Yeah, literally. You know? literally. So someone famously said then, and I can't remember who, but said, is a weak man's idea of a strong man and a poor man's idea of a rich man. And they went on with the comparison, and that is so true, you know. Yeah, it's totally true. I know. I know. And now, now you have a Paul Ryan, you know, in his latest comments that he's actually calling him a loser. 
is, is, yeah. is, we, we lose with this guy. It's true. It's remarkable to me. I mean, you know, if you go into something, pick a good team, pick a good person. This guy doesn't win anything. He's he got in there, you know, he got all the cards perfectly lined up in 2016. Ever since then, it's been loss after loss after loss. Every time he's involved in something, they pay the price and they lose. You know, they lost the Senate, they lost the House, they lost the presidency. It's gobsmacking because now you had the the GOP grown ups, for want of a better word, overused, who depart the Morning Joes, the you know the different ones, probably Glenn Kushner and Kushner and those ones, you know, who were bright enough, but they were Republicans, and then they left out of principle. That puts and became the Lincoln Project, etc. Then you had the others who, well, I was due for retirement in a few years, but I think I'll go now. <laughs> there was a group of them. That left still quite a few of the old bureaucracy that will be able to manage him. He'll realise in a few weeks or months he's out of his depth, then we'll step in, then we'll be able to run the show. That included the McConnells and, you know, the others who stayed on board. Mm-hmm. Now they're left with no one. These maniacs are talking to each other. And what happens is, of course, because they are like 14 year old mean girls, they turn on each other in the twinkling of an eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's true. I hope that stand up cat fight between Bobert and MTG in the hallowed halls. I think it should be when history's back in the curriculum, there, there's a conversation starter. Yeah, it's true. It's true. The history books will say, what happened in the US in the 2020s? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord. I mean, now they're, you probably heard, they're cursing each other out and, uh, you know, right in the, the, the house. And it's, see, it's another example the minority pressuring the majority. It's 10 out of, what is it, yeah. 200? And those 10, because McCarthy doesn't want to lose his, his, his job. By the way, that, what do you get? What do you, what's your sense of McCarthy? Ooh, because he's ooh, under a lot of what pressure. What I get is they'll try very soon, within the next week, to do it. I don't think that'll work, but it'll be death by a thousand cuts after that. And I think he will be gone second, third time round. Huh. Well, yeah, well, so we'll got, see. but he, that's what I got. His chart is is in, in great <laughs> peril until around February or so, uh, maybe March, yeah. maybe. It's really, yeah. really hard because the the marker is the Saturn station in November and Saturn station somewhere and you're in this kind of jam. It's very unfavorable and he, he can't, you know, he, he can't really do anything because whatever he does, he creates a different problem. He's, he's in the corner. He's painted himself there. So. Yeah. Um, And again, I have zero sympathy. Why did he even want the gig? This amazes me. Who would want that poison chalice? So he might have dreamt about it since he was 12, but if you had a working neuron, you'd go, this is not the time. (laughs) Oh, I don't think I'll go for that. But obviously he doesn't. Because they only talk to each other. They exist in this echo chamber of hell. It's true. And they it's actually true. believe each other's stories. It's true. And he thinks, I, I'm pretty sure I can read his mind. He thinks that if he if he pushes away the the 10 or whatever number of rebels and makes a, an agreement with Democrats, then they will uh, vacate the chair, try to throw him out. And I think he worries that they would, even though they have no replacement, really, which is another problem, he worries that they would find someone because they would have to, because it would be such an outrage, you know, to have worked with Democrats. Well, the before. talk at the moment is his deputy, whoever that is. I don't even know his name. But th- they're getting it that specific now, hmm. right? So there's definitely a move, but for whatever reason, and we all knew he was on borrowed time from the moment he, you know, did his thing. But I think he'll weather this first storm but not the others. So we'll see what transpires with that. 
you see that within the next few, uh, few months as well, right? Yes, yes. I think even weeks, possibly. Makes sense. Because no, makes they're getting sense. more desperate. Yeah. So we've had a we've we've talked it out. Any any last thoughts? But let's leave it on a really positive. <laughs> May the pendulum swing. <laughs> I think the pendulum is swinging. I mean, we can just the you know, pendulum of justice and righteousness and all those good things is overdue for a swing. So let's put our energy behind that. All right. It was a pleasure. I look forward to the next one and continued happy travels in the meantime. Thank you so much, Andre. It was an absolute pleasure. Likewise. Bye, everyone. Ciao, ciao.